More than 50% of the faculty teaching in today's colleges and universities are temporary, seasonal, adjunct faculty. And almost 70% of all the courses taught in public and private universities today are taught by temporary or adjunct faculty. So I bet you're wondering, how can I get one of those jobs? <laughs> You've got a good education. You've even got real world experience, something a lot of higher ed professors never have. You're good at communicating your field and you want to see others learn how to use this knowledge and maybe you want to supplement your income with a couple thousand dollars for just three months of work. So let's look at how to get started getting an adjunct job in higher education today. So tap the like button and let's get into it. Hi, I'm James Callahan and this is The Do-Over Show and with my 20 plus years of teaching as an adjunct at eight or nine public and private universities, I've seen so many job openings for adjuncts that no one knew how to get. And today, there are even more. Higher education is always looking for someone they can take advantage of. And you, you might be that person. So how do you find them? Well, if you're a professional adjunct, now this is the minority of those who teach as adjuncts, that is, that's all they do to earn their income, and that is they work at two, three, or even four colleges and universities in their area, and they teach three or four college courses each and every semester, and they usually have someone else supplementing their income or at least getting them into, I don't know, public assistance. But in this setting, you know very well that there are jobs out there. Now the question is, for those of you who have work, actually make a living or most of a living working a real job, you're wondering how can I get into the utopia of teaching in higher education? And here's an interesting tidbit. A recent survey by the American Federation of Teachers shows that almost 40% of the adjunct world has been doing it for more than 15 years. That is, a lot of people who teach as adjuncts have a lot of experience teaching as adjuncts. This means for that these insiders working year to year, semester by semester, contract by contract, full-time adjuncts or those making close to $40,000 a year or an obscene $80,000 a year according to really untrustworthy sampling by ZipRecruiter. Don't believe the numbers that come from ZipRecruiter for any job, especially part-time or adjunct teaching. They're way off. Now, if you're in the work world and you have professional certifications or qualifications, that kind of experience, when you approach adjunct teaching, you're really approaching it as a consultant would, a one-off type of approach. You leverage your experience as a gig job and you're doing it for a little, not for a living. Okay, so that's the money story. Now the reality about how do you actually get one of these jobs or get started as an adjunct. Here are the basic approaches. Now, if you're in higher education, working on a master's degree or a doctorate, you have an in, an unbelievable in, the easiest in, the best in to get yourself in the classroom. Heck, some of you are required to teach a course. Some of you are actually paid to teach a course in addition to any scholarship or TA or RA you get. Yeah, teaching assistant, those get you in the classroom. But I remember most teaching assistants when I was in grad school just sat there in the class while the professor taught the class. And what did the TA do? They graded papers, they proctored exams, they, didn't, they read the papers and they gave them to the prof and the prof looked and said, yeah, that's okay. No, that kid deserves a better grade without ever reading the paper. Welcome to TAing. When I was finishing my graduate work at Marquette a few years ago, I have to tell you, I had an absolutely fantastic professor that I TA'd for. And this person actually asked me to teach and we worked on preparing for my presentations and conversations, discussions. He actually helped me through office hours and how to interact with students and how to build better relationships outside the classroom that actually contributed to student ability and learning and my own ability as a teacher and communicator. He was absolutely fantastic. And I hope that someone, I hope that you can find someone like that in your graduate program. But I have to tell you, he was also my best advocate because when a job came open at another smaller regional college or university, he took the initiative to put my name in and said, hey, I've got this grad student I think you ought to take a look at to teach a course or two. 
When I got an opportunity in local colleges and even in the state university system, I didn't always teach in my field. Yeah, I taught in a parallel field or supporting field, or I taught a gen ed course. And that's what a lot of adjuncts end up teaching. That is, they end up teaching the courses that tenure faculty really doesn't want to teach. The larger classes, the required classes, the classes where students have to be there but don't want to be there, they don't want that on their plate. So they're hiring adjuncts for that. More and more in higher education, they're hiring adjuncts for that. So get over the idea that you're gonna teach this special seminar in your obscure dissertation topic that you've been working on in four different languages for the last 12 years of your life. Forget that. You're gonna teach a gen ed course to students who don't wanna be there but have to be there, and you're gonna be there, and it's gonna test, it's gonna test your commitment to teaching and your ability to communicate and engage with people who don't necessarily wanna to listen to what you have to say. So that's where most adjuncts are gonna get their start, in those adversarial circumstances, and it's up to you to turn them into magic. So if you're in higher education, that's the easiest way to get your foot in the door in the adjunct life. And that's the same way in professional circles and networking, where over 80% of mid to higher level jobs in the business world today, they're actually achieved through that first step of networking, being known, being available, being accessible, in your network and that gets you in the door and gets you an opportunity that you otherwise wouldn't see. So yes, check out all the professional publications in your field or in general fields like the Chronicle of Higher Education, the Bible of Higher Ed News and Influence today. Yeah, by all means, check them out. But remember that those are more national sources. So don't expect to get a local connection out of the Chronicle of Higher Education or a job opening. They don't spend time or money advertising a one-off adjunct job for $3,000 in the Chronicle because it's gonna cost them hundreds of dollars to get that place in their job ads. So yeah, go ahead and look there to see what's out there, but that's not the real world. The real world is what you're able to create in local networking and connections, taking advantage of the people who will go to bat for you, be on your side, be your advocate, as well as the professional connections you have through your professional or your business background. Another thing that people suggest is that you go to conferences, regional and national conferences, because that's where you get to do some real networking. And I'm sorry to say, that's not the case. If you ever notice that when you show up at a national conference or even a larger regional conference, everybody already knows everybody else. Where did that happen? Because networking is just sort of reaffirmed at those events. It doesn't begin or it's not nurtured at those events. So don't think that if you just sign up and pay an expense to go to the grand national conference of your discipline, that somehow magically you're going to network with thousands of peers. It doesn't happen that way. Regional and national conferences aren't a great resource for adjunct interviews. I've interviewed at national conferences for tenure track positions long ago. Adjunct interviews happen with department chairs. By the way, they don't happen when you buddy up with somebody who's actually teaching in the school, somebody who's not a decision maker. The people who make the decisions are usually the department chair. At really small schools, an academic dean or a provost might be the point of contact, but that is very rare. Most of them want to give that responsibility to the department chair because they don't want to do the work of having to vet 10 or 20 of you. They want to be able to look at the department chair and say, did you make a good choice? The department chair does the work not the faculty member in the department because you're never gonna go above that person's head. It's the department chair that's your main point of contact. That's your network. So begin by networking with the department chairs in your field and adjacent or parallel fields. The kind of people who are responsible for fulfilling gen ed courses because that is the easiest road into adjunct teaching. So how do you begin this networking? Well, I begin with a basic email to the department chair with a summary, a very brief summary, introducing yourself, that you're available, that you're in the area, here's your background, here's your experience. Yeah, you can cite your degrees, but do not cite your dissertation title, your master's thesis, and get into the weeds about your specialization or your passion or your philosophy of teaching. Save it. They just wanna know that you're there, you're available, and that you're a real human being. And you also want to mention if you've taught before at grad, in grad school at any point, and you can also compliment about the department's reputation or the students, but don't brown nose the department chair. They can smell it a mile away. And as you close off that brief introductory email, you're going to volunteer to share your CV at a later point in time. But you're not going to follow up the next day. You're going to give it some time to breathe. You're going to give it an opportunity for the department chair to see it. And that's when you're gonna write a second email and you're gonna limit it to that. Say, hey, I promise to send you my CV. Here's my availability. I'm interested in teaching as an adjunct. I'd love a conversation. 
That's it. And I would work ahead nine, six, and three months to my points of contact with the department chair. That is nine months, at least nine months ahead, I send that introductory email. In a few weeks, I send a follow-up at least six months out with my CV, reminding them of my availability and my willingness. And then three months out, offer say, if you've got any last minute opportunities. Why? Because the department chair has to fill openings for the coming academic year at least nine months in advance. And that's when you put yourself in front of them and you remind them at six months and you remind them at three months because some of them, not all of them, but some of them are gonna have an emergency need that they're gonna to need to fill. And that's when you wanna just show, I'm here, I'm ready, take advantage of me. So that means for most of us in the Northern Hemisphere, we make our first contact in late September, October, or even November for the following academic year. We follow up at the end of January into February, and then we follow up in late April, early May for our final contact hoping to get an opportunity in the coming academic year, nine, six, and three months ahead of time. And if you get your foot in the door, and if you get that opportunity, within the first few weeks of teaching your course, again, you keep up contact with the department chair and you offer yourself and your availability and say, things are going really well. I'd like to continue doing this. And that's when you also start to look to, if you live in an area with another college or university or several, that's when you start to reach out to others and you lead with this, I'm teaching as an adjunct at this college or university. I'd like to use my skills and availability to help you in your college or university. And I'd like to talk to you about my availability. And you start that process all over again, nine, six, and three months ahead of when the opportunity might arise. And this is when you also go back to your department chair and you volunteer to teach to teach the same course again, to teach another section of the course, which saves you on a new prep, which means that you'll actually get paid more per hour of investment in teaching than you would if you were constantly doing new preps or to teach a second course. At one local university, I ended up teaching one humanities course, a gen ed course, and then in the next semester they said, would you like to teach two sections of the course? back to back on the same days. Drive there just two days a week and I get to teach two courses and I get to double the income and I only do one prep. Yes, I would love to do that, thank you very much. And I've done a video on how as adjuncts we can increase our per hour pay for the investment we make in order to take advantage of what it is like teaching as an adjunct and contributing to higher education and making money doing it. And you can check out that video here. So where does this leave you? Well. Hopefully networking, actively pursuing those relationships, not at formal events like conf conferences, but in the informal way of you're just making yourself present. I know one fellow who would show up for the special lectures of the department that he wanted to work in, that he just showed up, he played it cool, he wasn't desperate, he wasn't begging, and he just showed up and he introduced himself. Hey, I work in this field, really interested in this topic, thanks for hosting this event, this lecture, this presentation. And with that, they began a conversation. He didn't wait, then he followed up. Hey, I met you the other night, I just wanted to tell you, I'm in this field, I have this experience, I'd love to talk to you about an opportunity of helping out your department. That is always solving the department's problems the department chairs problems. And another thing, always pay attention to the course offerings and the names of who is teaching and look them up in the college catalog to see if they're on the website, to see if they are regular faculty or if they're adjuncts. Look at the percentage, look at the courses. And if you notice that adjuncts tend to teach this kind of course, that's where you throw your hat in. That's where you talk to the department chair about because the department chair will know that you have done your due diligence. They'll know that you understand the reality of higher education today, and hopefully videos like this help you with that, and that you realize how you can contribute, realistically contribute, to solving the department chair's problems. And thanks for being part of the Do-Over Show. Please, while you're here, could you tap the like button? Because it really helps. And while you're tapping that like button, how about you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. I'm so glad you found me and I found you. Thanks.